Hello everyone, this is Sagar Shah and I have with me Shatanik. Uh, welcome Shatanik. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Well, Shatnik is the man behind the position for the day. You see it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Every day there's a new position that comes up and that is found and nicely put up by Shatnik. So Shatnik, I would like to call you the problemist. Is that a good name? Yeah, I mean, uh, by definition, a problem is, is someone who solves problems, who studies test problems. So, yeah, you can, by that, in that sense, I am a problem. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, when the year ended, 2020, we had a puzzle contest on Chess Base India. We called it the Christmas puzzles, uh, the New Year puzzles. And over there, you had posted six very tough positions. Yeah. And uh, we had given it, we had asked people to solve it and there were prizes uh, for them. Uh, and today we want you guys who haven't solved it yet to try and solve it. And also we will be revealing the solutions. So it's going to be like a, a, a video where you need to rack your brains a lot. You need to think a lot. And uh, I think Shatanik, uh, if people do think about it, uh, they will enjoy it. Yes, and I don't think that, that the problems are too difficult, actually. They are unconventional, and I mean, they are scary if you look at it, but uh, but uh, when you start thinking about it, then uh, they become easier. I, you know, what Shatanik does is all the time he tries solving these unconventional positions. So he thinks that these are very easy ones uh, to solve, but I don't think so. And they are not, not at all easy, but it will open up uh, your mind to a new genre of chess. Uh, which will be very interesting. So, how about we get going, Shatik? Yeah, sure. So, uh, just to let you guys know that there was this article which was published on Chessbase India uh, on 25th of December. And these are the problems. I'll put the link of this article in the description. So, just in case you want to know more about it. So, let's go to the first one over here. And what is it all about? Whoa, look at this. All the pieces on the screen. What is our task here, Shatnik? The task here is self-mate in 16. Now, you have to understand what a self-mate is. Self-mate. Uh, yeah. So here, actually, White is not trying to mate Black, but White is trying to force Black to deliver the checkmate. So <laughs> because that... if it was White to mate, he would just yeah. play this and it's checkmate. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yesterday, I posted a self-mate as position of the day and everyone was saying, why not uh, the mating one? Why not mating two? But the thing is that the task is different here. You have to uh, force black to deliver the check. Okay. So, so, will... so basically over here, hmm. black has black and white both kind of collaborate together. No, so... not collaboration. There is there is a contest. So okay. uh, there is no collaboration. Is, so there is contest. So black is trying. Black is not trying to mate white. Black will make every effort. So that uh, he doesn't end up meeting white, but <laughs> white will force black okay. to deliver the check. So, so it's like uh, opposite, yeah. The, yeah. the rule of a battle, but ba the... battle, but battle turned on its head. Okay. So basically, in chess, you want to checkmate your opponent. Here, yeah. you want to get self-mated. How is this important in ch like what help? What uh, how does it help someone to solve this? It doesn't, uh, I mean, if you are asking if it helps your over the world ability, no, I don't know uh, about that. I can't say, I mean, it's debatable whether it helps or not. But uh, yeah, this is a very important uh, genre of problem and it uh, it is really creative and you will see that it's okay. quite fun. I think it's creative. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah. Uh, so uh, do you have an easier example? Because this is 16 moves Yeah. Uh, and maybe it's quite tricky, but if we can explain the concept of self-mate, through an easier example. Yeah, I have just sent you a position with Balashov. So you can put that up. Yeah. So this was the position that I shared yesterday. Uh, okay. On uh, as position of the day. So this and people, one is, this is self made in three. White has to play in order to self made black. No, in order to self made himself. Himself. Oh, self made himself in three moves. Okay, guys, yeah. this is a little complicated, but white should get self mated. Uh, but yeah. if let's say if it is white to move and yeah. i play the move something like let's say this one 
Yeah. Then isn't this already checkmate? So, but uh, Black will not play G two G two. No, I mean, Black will try to. Uh, this is Black the is... this is the tricky part. Yeah, you have so to Black force is... him. Yeah, you have to force him. Ooh, so guys, try to pause this video. Try to think uh, as to how Black doesn't want to checkmate White, but White wants to get checkmated. So how do you force Black to checkmate White? Wow, this is tricky. I mean, how do you force someone when he doesn't want to do it? Yeah. So you have to use a combination of check and uh, zhuang, usually. Uh, to do this. Okay, let's let's begin. Uh, what would be the first move here? Well, let's let's uh, look at bishop b three. You started with bishop b three. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, I mean, my that? my mind was like, uh, yeah, bishop b three, and then you have to push the pawn maybe somewhere. Okay, let's push it a five. Yeah. Now I go bishop a four. Blocking this, okay. Yeah, and now you don't want to play g two right away, so you have to move the pawn. Move it. I capture the pawn. Also, c five would be the same. I will capture the pawn. And you just take. And, and now you are in a zoom zoom. Yeah, you don't have any legal move. Uh, zoom zoom. Okay, so here you need to put your opponent in a zoom zoom in order to force him, and now it's a checkmate. Very nice. Yeah, but bishop b three is not the solution. Okay. Uh, uh, let's let's look at the refutation. Even if you play c5, uh, even then uh, there will be a self-meeting tree. But uh, yeah, because the c5, the same concept of yeah. bishop c4. Yeah. You block the c pawn and then you capture the a pawn. Yeah. So here, but if you play a6 or c6, then then there, there will be no self -made. because after let's say b into a6, c6 into, important. Yeah. That is simply push uh, one step. And then next third move he will go c5 and there is no way to put him in a zug zwang to force him g2. Okay, yeah. got it. So, so the key move here is I mean if you just go back. Yeah. Not bishop b3. Bishop d5. Okay. Yeah. Now we have uh, the same four possibilities. Let's say uh, a6. Then I just capture b into a6. Now if black plays c5, then I have bishop c4. Yeah, this we know already. And if he yeah. plays, oh, c6, you will take and it. I have to to and that is the point behind bishop c4. Wow, very cool. And what if I go uh, c6 here? I take bishop into c You take bishop c6 so that a5 or a6 is met with this. So he yeah. has to play g2. And yeah. what if I go c5? Oh. Yeah, then I go bishop c4. Ah. And again, I take up the a pawn and it will be here. Ah, so the key concept is if I go bishop f7 here, you will go c6 and I must take with the bishop. Yeah. That is the reason why you are putting it on d5. Otherwise, it does not work. Correct. So this was a very easy example. Uh, so just uh, bishop d5 is the answer. a5, b, a, c6. And takes and he has to. It's a mate. Very good. Okay. So coming back to our position. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So, uh, uh, in the previous problem, we had this uh, g3 pawn, and we understood that you have to force g3 g2 to checkmate the white pawn. Mm. In this position, it, it looks quite complex. But uh, can you guess which uh, pawn or piece should be the mating piece? Uh, first of all, I don't see this guy moving. This guy, this guy, this guy. Nothing's moving. So the bishop has to keep moving back and forth. So meanwhile, I'll try to push this pawn up mm -hmm. the board. I can't make a queen, otherwise it's checkmate on white. So I'll make a knight or a bishop or something. Then I'll try and capture this. Then I'll try to bring another. I don't know. I, I mean, I may have to. Uh, you just uh, try to, uh, try to see uh, what should be the last move. Ah, how how can uh, black checkmate white? Correct. If black yeah. has a knight here, no, this square is there. If black has a bishop here, isn't hmm. this checkmate? Yeah. Or a queen there, something yeah, but, like that. Yeah, but you can't, you can't uh, bring a bishop there because then you have to open up uh, f two and g three, and that is very complicated. There is a simpler way. Okay, okay, but I I can't use this bishop to checkmate yeah. this guy, so I need to use this pawn, correct? 
or this one yeah but uh, black black will not promote those things i mean black uh, black doesn't want to help you hmm no i have to force him yeah but you can't can you force actually force f1 if uh, the f2 point to f1 there is no way to force uh, ah yeah, yeah 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 very complicated how do you think about it yeah i mean uh, uh, it is not that complicated you see uh, you look at the gp square i mean i know the solution so it is not very complicated to me yeah but uh, yeah i mean i got it in i think uh, 10 15 minutes uh, yeah. so not very complicated so you see if you look at the gp square if you put a knight there here yeah ooh then see uh, h into gp is 4 ah uh. that will have to take h into gp and now only problem is that uh, white uh, the white king has that f square you see oh so, so you first have to block, block that e4 square and then you have to put a knight on g4 now see uh, the plan is very clear but from where ah oh, yeah no how do i get g6 uh so i uh, this knight plan was c6, good yeah yeah uh, knight c6 knight e7 knight g6 oh beautiful beautiful so how many moves uh let's just do this way 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 cool got it and all and all the way uh, that will only move his bishop from h2 to d yeah all the time because he has no other move he'll keep doing this yeah, yeah. ah so the way to force a self mate is to actually make black force here, him here to take no... it and there here there is no concept of this zone because the black always has this move with bishop so Correct. you have to give a check so the here check and put him in a way that he that is mated and he must take it fantastic so a4 bishop g1 a5 bishop h2 a6 bishop g1 a7 bishop h2 uh bishop comes here takes this pawn blocks the king's path push 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 yeah uh check and mate what a nice way to finish i think um, as very, you rightly not very difficult it was not tough but I, i as you rightly pointed out you have to be creative you have to think outside the box and uh, isn't this very similar to solving complex mathematical problems or something like that yeah yeah i mean uh, uh, yeah it is similar to any prob- any kind of problem problem solving so it, will, it will sharpen your analytical skills and your creative thinking ability Amazing. Okay, so shall we go to the next one? Yeah, sure. Okay, so this is the second puzzle here, and this one this is very is... interesting. What uh, is what is the task here? The task here is uh, once again uh, this is this, both these problems are part of uh, the first section of the article, uh, which I have I think I have named uh, a battle of different kinds. So there is battle, but the battle is of different kinds. Okay. So here it is not self-made, but Once again, there is a contest, but contest revolves around a very different point. So here, white is trying to castle, castle long. Okay. But black will try to prevent it. But there is a way to uh, force uh, castling in seventy-six minutes. What? <laughs> I so mean, the, so the task here is yeah, that it, white that has to long castle. Yeah, but black has his uh, knight on d one. Hmm. So uh, and black can put it on c3 and maybe also bring it to d1. But uh, white has a way to force, uh, you know, for eliminate that knight and then. So uh, so what you are saying one. is that if let's say first move, uh, I play with white, uh, let's say random move bishop here, okay. Uh, yeah. Then if he goes knight a3 and if I do this, then I have solved the problem. Correct. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that will not do that by the way remember guys here you can long castle because the knight controls b1 and yeah. the king is going from e1 to c1 so long castling is possible it doesn't the knight doesn't interfere in the king's path and also if here he plays knight here i can just take it and next move long castle so i'm i have done the thing so what black will do is do everything possible to prevent white from castling so he won't move this knight Okay, got it. So, what would he do? He would push the pawn, right? That's this pawn or this pawn. Any pawn he can push. Let's push this one. Yeah. 
but uh, let's not uh, i mean think that way i mean we have to you know just uh, yeah let's think I, to... because if we think this way there are so many possibilities yeah, you would get to think moves so you just have to get the idea so 76 moves it will take to castle Yeah. Okay. How? But, how should... but it's very simple and it follows only one strategy. Okay. I I get scared when you say seventy six. And, and by the way, this has, this is uh, both these problems that that self net and this problem has been composed by a high school student. By a high school student. Yeah. Yeah. His name is James Nalcom. Uh, he's from Iowa. Okay. Quite okay. talented. Very nice. And he, he likes uh, this sort of problem. You know, tasks and you know, unusual, very long problems. This sort of problem. Okay. So, so first observation is that black cannot move the knight on uh, d1. For example, if uh, black plays knight c3 also, then I can just capture that knight, and uh, and after that uh, there is no way to stop long capture. Yes. Also, white cannot move the knight on e2 because if white moves that knight, then there is no set. Uh, black can simply play knight c3 and then play knight d1. It's, it's only delay. Yeah, he keeps on moving. So I need to keep this knight here. I cannot move the king and the rook because that otherwise I cannot castle. Yeah. So you have to move the bishop. Yeah, let's move the bishop. So bishop e8 was is really the first move. I I think the right. But okay. what is the point here? So just uh, let's keep on going. Uh, black will play uh, king to g8. Okay. There is no way to uh, move the uh, knight. Yeah. So the bishop will go to g7. I'm just thinking where the bishop is heading, uh, because even if I go to a8, I still have moves there. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, king h8. Yeah. Here. Eight. Now let's go to a6. Yeah. Now we don't go to c8. We go to b7. Oh, look at this! Look at this! I know what you are doing. You Triangle. are using these two squares to triangulate so mm -hmm. that you will come back here in a way. Where the king is on h8, you will put the bishop on f7 and stop him from moving his king. So then the only the pawn moves will be left. Exactly, and uh, and once all the pawns move to their you know last position, the knight will be forced to move. I will capture the knight and then I will go back. Beautiful, beautiful. So uh, it's very important that you have these two squares to triangulate because otherwise, if you come back b d7 here. King h8, bishop e8, king g8, check king h8, and you land up in the same position where you began with. So yeah. bishop a6, king h8, bishop b7, king g8. Now c8, d7, e8, and f7. Very nice. And we got the first task. The king is now jammed in. Jammed in, and they uh, they will have to move up there. Yeah, let's Any move. One yeah. Let's move a4. Yeah. Now you keep going uh, doing this. <laughs> I think yeah, there will be you will you will you will do this for nine times. I think. Oh, okay. And so, all the pawns will be locked in. Very very cool. Very cool. So very... actually, these kind of puzzles. I mean, the, this, this is a tradition among problem is to uh, you know compose and uh, pose uh, nice and funny problems using these kind. And they are not supposed to be difficult, but they are they are supposed to be you know funny and you know, like this. I I know you got mails where people said we sat with our family and solved this. Yeah, I think yeah. that kind of uh, grabbed the essence of uh, yeah, what yeah. you wanted to do because to get the family together and solve is just what you want to do in Christmas. H four. So we have reached sixty four moves, guys. The bishop is the most hard working member in this family of white, and now. All moves are over. Black has to move his knight because nothing else moves. Yeah. So he goes here. If he had gone knight a3, Then you can already three. castle. Uh, so here knight c3, you yeah. take e2. Bishop. Oh, here again you have to do this. No, no, you uh, you can play either bishop e8 or bishop g8. It doesn't matter. Ah, now you're just making a square so that there's no stalemate because if you would have taken here, it's a stalemate. Yeah, yeah. So bishop e8 here takes, and seventy sixth move, guys. Long castle, and you have done the job. Very nice James, position. Yeah, and now James had given a challenge. Uh, I had uh, mentioned it in my second article that my, to our readers that if anybody could come up with a similar position, but you know, exceeding seventy six move. Uh, similar position, but but exceeding you know, same, same task, but ex exceeding seventy six move. So. Uh, 
uh, one of our solvers, uh, Dr. Mani Kumar, ah. Chennai. Ah. He has actually made a very nice problem and he has improved the solution. He has gotten rid of that last dual, Bishop V8, Bishop V8 dual. And he has... Uh, oh, this is very important. Problem. In by the way, in problem solving, that there should be usually single solution. Here yeah. you see because both these moves work, the value of that position diminishes slightly. Yeah. Uh, Although so, this is very minor, but still very minor because you it's like right at the very end. Yeah. So uh, Mani Kumar yeah. has uh, composed one. Yeah. So we should give a shout out to him. Yeah. But uh, where where can we see that position? I have given it to you. You have. Ah. You have it in your data. I have it. Oh, okay. Here it is. Is this? Ah, should I should I bring this up? Yeah, yeah. Please. It is. It is the same problem, but there are more moves, and the dual has been eliminated in a very clever way. So, Doctor uh, Mani Kumar has uh, given this problem here. Very interesting. Yeah. And this you is. You can see that the king has been shifted to the queen side, and so therefore. Uh, there are no no duals here. Okay, let me think. Uh, it's the same idea, same concept. So let's yeah. go here, 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 here. Ah, so you moved the pawns there. Both. There's no queen side pawn. And now here, pawn push. You do this same thing. But tuck, there are no moves. Tuck, 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 tuck. And he has one, two. Uh, sorry, one has already been played. One, two, three, four, five. Six, six, yeah, till here. Yeah. Then seven, eight. So that's already eighty no, moves, yeah. Then there are then there is e six also. Ah, then there three. is this another pawn. So one, uh, two. Okay, got it. So one, so if you calculate, it will be hundred twenty moves. Basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. ten, and every move. This is this entire every... thing is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Nine, nine mm -hmm. moves, yeah. Yeah. So uh, nine so into one, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine moves. So, so nine, nine into ten, ten. That's ninety moves already. And then there will be another round of triangulation, uh, where the knight will have to. Come out. So okay. uh, nine more moves, ninety nine, and then last two moves. So hundred and two moves. Yeah. Oh, well done, Mani Kumarji. Well, well done. That is well, very well solved. Uh, and he's increased it by twenty four. There was seventy, is twenty six, which is a lot. Okay, moving on to the third one. Yeah. I'm very excited to know what the next task is because this is so. This is like a great way to train your mind to problem solving logical thinking analytical thinking so many things all rolled up into one okay now this is very funny because the knight is kind of trapped here the bishop is also has only two squares to move so what's the task here shatnik uh, this was not the actual third problem uh, yeah, the third problem was help it in 15 okay let me then bring that up because yeah, let's do that first and then we come to this. Helpmate in 25? Helpmate in 15. Yeah, this one is 15, I think. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is this. This is the one, yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah. So here, uh, yeah, helpmate. Help okay, mate so is... let me uh, use my knowledge of what you have taught me. So basically, white has to get checkmated. Black doesn't want him, want to checkmate him. So that, white is that is a self. Oh, that is a self mate. Now you are saying help mate. Yeah, and this is this is completely different from self mate because here there is no battle. That both sides are not uh, battling each other. They are, they will only cooperate each other. Here there is cooperation. So here, uh, who who self mate? Who help mates whom? Yeah, black moves first, and and then the task is to get the black king checkmate, and both sides work together. Okay, so black that king is. has to get checkmated. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to think how so here is that here it is that to me. So just uh, make sure that it yeah. is that to uh, this position. So black to move here, mm -hmm. and in 15 moves you have to checkmate black. Black, black king. So now uh, 
just like self net you have to visualize the final position hmm. so uh, what do you think will be the mating day at the For, end of first of all here if i move this king uh, okay my king cannot move that is the question that is the problem yeah. i cannot even uh, move my i have to keep moving my bishop so what will black do ah black will try to move his king okay let's see where can the king go from here 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 you and take, then the knight. take the knight as well okay yeah. but then you're just moving how do i checkmate you yeah uh, so you have to really uh, first visualize the final position so let's let's think uh from yeah. that word okay i'm trying to think uh ultra. so let's say let's say tell me uh, which piece is which piece is going to probably uh take the black thing the knight cannot come out really hmm. so it should, it should have to be the bishop yes i mean that is the most probable probable piece yes now to uh, bring the bishop out you need to eliminate the c2 and c2 pawn hmm and then you have to eliminate and for that to eliminate c2 and b2 you have to eliminate the a1 yeah so first take so first, this guy first, let's do that. then take these two pawns and, and free then, up the bishop uh free up the bishop yeah then yeah. but then i'm still figuring how what is the final mating pattern yeah if, if that is difficult you can at, at least go up to that point and then then again start okay, let's let's go there uh, so I'm counting the moves because it's 15 moves, right? You have right. to, or 16. 15. Actually, if you write it uh, uh, with black, black move first, then it will be 15. But in, on chess base, you can't do that. So last move will come as 15. Okay. That so is not important. Yeah. One. Just take the shortest one. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six. Take. Here. Here, here. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Now, now, now. Try to see where. where should the black <laughs> I saw the go? move. Uh, but where should the black king go? I think if you put the king on c4, um, yeah. but then he's running from b5. If you put the king b5, here, b5, he's running here, so we can't get control over everything. Yeah. Um. It is, it is not very difficult to think from this here. is a yeah. form of thinking which i have never trained myself and it's quite difficult to to imagine where should the king go um maybe king i mean thinking logically c4 cannot be the yeah be the because there are too many aspects here so, I'm also thinking if he takes comes here, then then also d6 is uh, d6 is yeah, uh, too many yeah, squares. E6 is, e6 is e. yeah, but you know you can also consider a square that is occupied by a black unit right now. I mean you don't have to uh, you don't have to consider only the vacant square. You can consider a square that has been that is being occupied by a black unit right now. Mm. Because I can eliminate that black unit if I want. Ah, okay. So you are saying that if you take here, pawn, pawn. Yeah. If so, he takes here, here. And then somehow we get his king here. Yes. And then That's we fine. can land a check and um, it would be a mate. Yes. Something of the oh f five is the square. It's very complex. It's actually not easy to think. How do you think this way? Maybe I have more practice. I mean, I I solve this kind of problem all the time. So, so take, take because there are so many possibilities. But you need to understand. Oh, this doesn't work there. It cannot work there. It has to work somewhere else. And here, f five is the square. Yeah, it's a checkmate. Very cool. Because I think one of the reasons is that. You have two white pawns covering the black squares here. Yes. And so and it also, could be a good this idea. This is covered by black stone pawn. And the bishop is taking care right. of b4 and e6. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, let's move on to the next one. 
again looks very interesting this uh, one you should be able to solve and this is very fun okay so, uh, now you're putting pressure on me uh this is white to play and what is it it is actually uh, this is also help play but here white will make 25 consecutive uh, 20 yeah 25 consecutive moves black will not play at all so black will just hey, sorry sorry i'm uh, saying wrong uh black will play 25 consecutive moves white will not play at all hmm. i mean white will white will simply skip his turn and black will uh, play with the aim of creating a position hmm. where white will be able to deliver a checkmating one so essentially black is helping white but the help is you know intensified so he will play 24 25 consecutive moves black will not play which will all be legal moves right 25 legal. yeah they, they, they should not be check and all so okay. the white king cannot come under check or the black king cannot come under check while these moves are being made mm. so uh, the black will make 25 uh, legal why do you moves. think i should get this because uh, i mean after you have solved the helmet and 15 which uh, i think uh, was quite difficult more difficult in this one uh, you just have to imagine the final net and then you should get it. I mean, final net is not not, not uh, difficult to do. I'm thinking this pawn should become a knight. I don't know why. You you first try to think what should be the final net. Final like, final mating position should be so, with so these. Black, will, Black is trying to create a position where white will be able to deliver the mating one. Right. So what is the easiest position that comes to mind? Okay, these two bishops should uh, use themselves to checkmate, uh, but but if I if I have this bishop here, like let's say last move is bishop takes c three or something, the king has always the b one square. Yeah, so you have to uh, block that b one square with something, and that something should not be knight because the knight can interfere on that. You know, so it should be a bishop. Exactly. But then and... if it's a bishop. Then this pawn cannot go away. Oh, so um, you are going there. Uh, so first of all, I need a, I need this pawn also to start coming up. Yeah. Uh, not really. No. No. That bishop will do all the work. Okay. You need to play c4. You need to open up that uh, bishop on e5. Ah yes 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 yes. yes. Okay, How got it. Do? So can I do? Uh, but if I if I play uh, c5. Then that's so already white one cannot, move for white. So cannot, yeah, white cannot play. White hmm. cannot play. So you have to eliminate uh, c4 in another way. Okay. Using here, a black key thing. Here, 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 here. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry. Here, 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 here. No, not here. Not, not, not on f5 because f5 is an illegal. Oh, it's a, it's so a g4, h5. Yeah. Here, here. Oh no, it's, it's a check. So I have to go this way. Here, 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 here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so go back. And then you have to come back on the same thing. Come back, come back, and here, and then see. Oh my god, this is very cool. This is very cool. So uh bishop two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and... Now, white can check me. Beautiful, beautiful, Shatnik. Who is the composer of this? Yeah, the composer is uh, Paz Einat. Uh, I, I think you know him. Uh, he often comments on my positions of the day. He's, yes. a, he's a brilliant com composer Very of cool. direct mode. And he has composed this in collaboration with, with uh, Georgi Baksi. Georgi Bakhti is a, a legendary uh, Hungarian composer who died last year. Okay. So both of them are very great composers. Very so this nice is also not very, not very difficult, but very cool. Yeah, this was very nice. And, and I... all these problems are, uh, you know, in the spirit of Christmas. Yes, true, true. Well, well uh, found. you have found some very interesting positions. So we have uh, solved four until now. Yeah. Let's go to the fifth one. Uh, and what is this? It's the starting position of the game. Yeah, you have to go to the final position. Go to the final. I mean. Okay, let me let me reach the final position here. Yeah. 
and uh, remove that arrow actually. Yeah. yeah. So this is the position given to you, and you have to arrive at the position from the initial game array in seven minutes. So from so, the initial position, which is this one, guys. Uh, this one, where you know how the game of chess works. This is the one. You yeah. need to reach this position in seven moves. Seven moves. And and if you think of it, uh, it is again help play only. Both yes, sides yes. will cooperate. This is help play, correct? Yeah. Both sides will cooperate and so how how should I think about it? I see that the bishop is gone on f8 for yeah. black. Actually, I think that uh, I, I actually I found this problem like uh, one year ago, and I found this problem quite tricky. But most of our solvers solve it quite well. I think ninety eight percent. This is like well. detective work, no? Yeah, somewhat. In a way, is, you you see you go to the crime scene. You see yeah. that this is this is here, this is here. Oh, where is the bishop? I don't see why the rook is here. And then you go backwards and you try to fit things. Okay, this guy would have been killed by this guy. Rook is not on a1. Maybe yeah. the bishop would have taken it from here and then the knight would have come here and come back. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, since uh, it is only seven moves and it is the shortest proof game. Proof game. So... Uh, you know you have to play optimally. So the the possibility that you just said knight a3 and knight b1, that is uh, that is really improbable. It cannot happen. Why? Because, because it, is, uh, it is just wasting our tempo. No, no, not knight. I mean, I say that rook went to a bishop a3, rook yeah, rook. a3, then knight a3, then knight b1. That way. Knight a3 doesn't have to happen. I mean, the rook can be captured somewhere else. Knight a3, knight b1 is just wasting time. Ah. Okay. But you know, white has not done much actually. So I was thinking only black's moves are important. White has just. So I was. Uh, let's imagine it this way. Uh, a three. Here. Um, because there was this h pawn, so h three. Uh, okay, take. No, I have to get my rook to eight. Ah, okay. Uh, bishop a. Yeah, you get out the rook and then you try to eliminate the rook from there. Yeah. If they be shoved into a3, then look into a3. And now you try to eliminate that rook from there. Okay, how should I eliminate it? Uh, queen e7, uh, h4. You should not move those pieces because those pieces are undisturbed and they should be kept undisturbed. Yeah, it will take more moves. Now, in order for me to play queen e7, d8, f5, knight h6, rook f8, knight g8, too much time. Too much time. So, uh, you have to get the rook captured. Some, I mean, this is how I started thinking. So, you have to get the rook captured somewhere on f8 or g8 only, where the black pieces are moving. Mm. You understand that? Wow, wow. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, so can you show the solution? This is beautiful, actually. No, I, I don't want to show the solution. I, I just want to uh, tell uh, tell how I was thinking. Okay. So, because when I first uh, encountered this problem, I found it quite tricky. Mm. So first of all, A3, E6 is uh, obvious. Mm. Uh, that has to be played. And now I played, now I thought that I will just uh, take this up into A3, then look into A3. Yeah. So I just played a move uh, on the king side. I played, let's say, H4. Or h3 whatever now after bishop into h3 rook into h3 i just need to eliminate that rook and the only probable best probable squares are f8 and g8 i thought so let's go f6 here f6 yeah f6 sorry yeah now rook g3 f5 ah now you're going this way okay got yeah. it. rook g6 yeah this is this was my idea but it doesn't work let's say rook g8 now look into f8 now now you see that seven moves are already finished but you don't have the knight on g8 wow. so you are falling, falling one move short mm. so, so since i i am I, uh, I have solved many proof games i know that this sort of motives are uh, common in proof games you have to you know take the rook to the back rank and get it captured on the home square uh, so i was thinking like this but it actually the actual solution quite astonished me i mean when i saw this for the first time i was really i mean Surprised. So you were surprised by this move here, that white place. Yes. 
Okay, I would ask the viewers try to think you have to reach the position in seven moves. And as Shatnik showed you right now, if you chose the most uh, uh, common way, what he thinks is common, it's still uncommon. Uh, it takes eight moves. So that is why you have to think a little bit out of the box. And here the right move, uh, Shatnik, what is it? Look at it. Whoa. This and is... doesn't make any sense to play look at you here because it is just it just seems like best of time. Mm. But yeah. I think I think the reason is that when you put your pawn on h3 or h4, you close the rook's path to come here, right? No, not really that. No, I mean you close the rook's path to come here and then come to h6. Yeah, and yeah the yeah. knight can take it. Exactly, so that's yeah. the reason why you need the pawn on h2 and you need to waste sort of waste a move here even though that's only seven moves you have exactly. and that is why rook a2 beautiful beautiful so take take f6 rook h3 f5 rook h6 take h3 rook f8 h4 knight g8 well done oh nice. and if you see the full solution there are there are like four yeah four tempo moves here four tempo losses first mm. First is rook a2, then h3, then there is f6. Yes. So all these are all these are I mean uh, losing tempo because everybody. they can all be made in one move, and yet they are being made in two moves, like h3, h4. Yeah, yeah this is the shortest move. Yeah. Beautiful. So because the rook needs that these that this path, it's all about having this path for the rook. That is the reason why. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and that is composed by. Uh, Three composers. Three composers. So, Who are yeah. they? Yeah, Jus D. Her. Jus D. Her is, a, I think, from Netherlands. Uh, I know him. I, I speak to him quite often on Facebook. Okay. And the other is uh, Michel Kailod. Michel Kailod is a genius. He is from, he's a Frenchman and he's like uh, one number two in composition. And he's like one of the greatest chess minds ever. Uh, he's a giant. And the, and the third one is uh, Gianni Donati. He's also a very noted two game two games. The world of composition is filled with such geniuses, I think, uh, and they are so creative. I think if yeah, they I, I if they start, start even, yeah, uh, maybe most people haven't heard about uh, Mitchell Kailod. But if you ask me, I have to count him uh, among the you know uh, ten greatest minds of chess ever. I mean, he is such a genius, and I'm not saying this lightly. Okay. Why would you say that? Uh, is it is is there like some problems that he? Of course, this is one, but there must be many more, yeah. Which yeah, he yeah, has... he has he, he has composed sol in a, he composes solitary. I mean, uh, he has composed in many genres. In all, he can compose anything. He I think I think we anything. should have one sort of collection of his positions to show the viewers at some point to for yeah, them to solve. Yeah, actually, he has done everything. He has, yeah, he is an expert on theory problems. He's an expert on retrograde analysis. He has he's an expert. In direct marriage, self marriage, self marriage, everything. He does everything uh, with equal expertise, and uh, he's also a solving GM. Not only a, a solv uh, composing GM, he's also a solving GM. And I think he has uh, won the world solving championship once. Wow. So basically, so, guys, yeah, how yeah. chess has opening, middle game, end game theory, end game theory, end game practice. Solving also has, uh, composing also has like heads. So basically there is help mate, self mate, uh, retro grade analysis. There is, um, what else can we put there? Yeah, direct mate, direct studies, mate studies. studies. So all of this comes in, in it. And here Shatnik has managed to, you know, bring together many different, uh, ways of solving. So what is the task in the last position Shatnik? Yeah, the last position is also a proof game, but the proof game is not unique. This is not the one, sorry, yeah? Sorry, this is not the one. Uh, this is the next position came by this way. Okay. So... By Andrew Buchanan. Andrew Buchanan. Yeah. Yeah, position number six, uh, I think it is... Uh -huh, position. Okay, okay. Position number six, I have it. Okay, so what is the task there? Yeah, just to put it on board. Yeah, I have so it. Go to the last position, yeah. Ah, last one. Okay, let me get to the last position. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing is this. Yeah, okay, I removed the arrow. Yeah, so uh, this is also a proof game. You have to arrive at this position in 9.5 moves. 
which means uh, wide stance move basically mm. and so, it starts so, with a normal position and you have to reach here yeah you have to reach here uh, and the, this position is after wide stance move this looks but, very but, random but yeah but uh, but the, usually in proof games the sequence is always unique i mean if it is a normal proof game the sequence is unique mm. and there will uh, there will even be no transformation i mean the move order will also not change correct, so correct. but in this case uh, the proof game is not unique there are many possible sequences but all sequences follow a same similar pattern but you have to count all those sequences so so the task is in how many ways can you reach this position at the end from the start position yeah that's true this is crazy did anyone solve this yeah many people have solved it actually i did not expect so many people to come up with the solution how are, are is everyone like uh, just not exposed to this world of composition because for me when you say this i feel like oh let me let me do something else this looks too difficult i mean, first of all i have to reach this position second of all i have to think in different ways so if you think about it the queen could go from e7 to b4 to b3 could go from b6 to b3 could no, go but it, it can't go from e7 to b4 to b3 because it takes three moves the shortest path is b6 to b3 so, so you oh, it, you need to think that way also mm. yeah yeah so you have to you have to see the shortest path so yeah logically it is it is it can be done and it is uh, you know it's a very this is a very approachable and nice problem so, okay uh-huh. so basically <laughs> tell me how to approach it basically 2021 is a factor of two prime prime numbers 43 and 47 okay so and 43 and, so this is very nice so 43 and 47 are not very not very big numbers so some of our solvers also you know manually found those numbers 43 and 47 and we just multiplied them how do you what is 43 47 i don't understand why yeah, 43 I'm, yeah, I'm telling you. I'm telling you from this. Uh, let's let's first uh, look at this position and just try to uh, create a proof game that uh, that leads to this position. Okay. So let's go to the game array. From the start. Yeah, from the start. Okay. F4. Yeah, F4. Now, now the queen will come to B3. So the uh, optimal path is. Yeah, you can start with the knight also. Now, I... now let's let's look at the knight's path. No, the so thing, I... the problem is uh, the. One second. Let me go back to the. So this knight yeah. is already here. So you need this knight to come here, correct? Yeah. So if we have to decide on which path the knight takes, yeah. Then one, two, three, four, correct? Uh, but if I go like this, no. But you you go to the final position once. Yeah. You see that the c1 bishop is missing. So the knight has to not only come to b2, but it, it, has, it also has to uh, capture that c1 bishop. No, bishop is here. <laughs> oh, actually, you will see. I mean, uh, that bishop is not the bishop on, uh, bishop on c1. <laughs> I will That's go crazy. True. I will go crazy. I will be thinking all the time as to how to transfer this bishop to here. But why yeah, not? Why is that not? Yeah, actually, uh, when I was solving this problem, I tried to do that. I, I tried to take the bishop on c1 to f2, but it takes too many moves or something doesn't work out. So if you if you just try to find the proof game. You told me, Shatnik, yeah. that 17 people got this answer right, right? Yeah. And out of them, only two of them did not use, uh, you know, a proper mathematics. Uh, uh, except those two, all of them used proper permutation combinations, high school mathematics and found the answer in a very These are geniuses way. then, I would say. Yeah, they are very good. I mean, uh, yeah, they are very good. I was quite surprised. So, so basically, the good news, guys, is that uh, when we, I, I will come to the solution, when we actually uh, put up this entire quiz, we had three prizes. One was uh, Chess Base 16, correct? Uh, first prize. Second one was uh, Fritz 17. Third one was Chess Base Account, right, Shatnik? Yeah. And we thought that even getting three answers to all these six problems will not be easy. So three. I prime. thought I will get five or six entries, or maximum eight or nine entries, and uh, <laughs> out of that I will easily select three of them. And we got close to sixty entries. Sixty-five. Right? Entries. Sixty-five entries, and seventeen of them gave all the answers right. And guys, you can't even use engines to solve this. You need to use your brain. And seventeen. But technically, them... there are computer programs which can solve this, but. Uh... Yeah, but uh, the people who actually solved this, they, the way they uh, presented their arguments and all, uh, I'm sure that 
they solved it on their own. And also, it is not very easy for everyone to uh, get access of such computer programs. They are computer programs. Correct. Okay. So, um, what happened is we couldn't zero in on the top three winners. And that is why on 17th, which is day after tomorrow, we will be having all the 17 winners in a live contest to determine the top three finishers. And Shatnik will have new positions. And so you will see their brilliance live. And yeah. I'm very excited for it because to tell you the truth, whatever has been solved by them here, I don't think I would have been able to solve. So basically they have done something tremendous uh, and we will be witnessing them. Maybe at the end of it, if you have the names of the winners, you can read them out. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but first, let's go over this game f4. Yeah, and let's let's play the sample move. Knight c6. Yeah, f5. Knight e4. Here, okay. Knight takes this pawn. Oh, knight takes the bishop. Yeah. Now, oh, now you make the bishop. <laughs> then you take here. Then you take here. Okay, got it. The knight has come. One, e3, and Nice, nice. Okay. So uh, this is the only way to reach this position. I mean, uh, the move order can change, vary. So, for example, the uh, starting move can the knight can start from a six, from c six. You know, it can play. Uh, yeah. White can play f three also. Uh, white can play e three also. White can also. White can start start with e three knight uh, e three and then uh, and, uh, yeah knight e two. Correct. Like that. So there are so, so many possibilities. So How many do possibilities. you? But but the thing is that uh, if you look at it closely, uh, whites and blacks moves are independent of each other. So uh, it doesn't matter how white plays. How white plays doesn't matter. Doesn't affect the way black should play. So for example, white starts with e two. This does not affect how what, what black should play. Black right. can play like a six, knight c six, c six. Yeah. So basically, uh, these moves are independent of each other. So yes. if I calculate number of possible white sequences and number of possible black sequences separately, and then product them both, then multiply them both, then we should get the number of sequences. But how do you Since, find sequences for white? Yeah, uh, that I'm coming to that. Uh, yeah, let's now open that final article. I mean, I have written the mathematics down there. Okay, let me bring that one up here. This mm. was the uh first articles. Article. this was the question this is the solution yeah so see, if you how see... they have how they have i mean uh, those people have written such an excellent answer i mean they have explained everything so well someone and, has and, written in hindi also yes and this was one of the most impressive and impressive uh, solutions i got in paper they have written everything so well beautiful beautiful i am so happy that people are uh, solving. In fact, I remember that there is one uh, regular viewer or a very strong player, Aditya Samant, young boy, uh, who's uh, who wrote saying that uh, his father wrote saying the entire family sat together and tried solving it, right? Which is yeah. also so cool. Uh, so I'm going to let's go over to the this. All problems are explained, and guys, I'll be linking this article as well at the bottom, so you have the questions article and also the solutions article and you can check that out this is very nicely done by shatnik and um, this is andrew bukanan oh the yeah. one who who th this this helped this me by andrew okay this uh, this uh, uh, 2021 is by uh, this uh, for this problem we are uh, discussing right now is by andrew is by andrew bukanan yeah and not this one this is by uh, this you had said here yeah. Donati call, call it. Okay, this one is by Andrew Buchanan. And if you go up, uh, you will see the picture of uh, James Nell from the seventeen-year-old boy who composed a self-made and that casting problem in seventeen. This oh, he's James Malcolm. Where yeah. is he from? He's from Iowa. Okay. Yeah. Very very cool, yeah, Shatnik. These yeah. are all geniuses. Maybe someday we should get them on stream. Would be wonderful to yeah. talk to them. Uh, so yeah, coming here. Yeah. So now let's uh, let's count the number. I uh, see you. You will see that I have made two cases: uh, number of black moves and number of white moves. Hmm. So uh, so for this problem, uh, count counting black moves. Case one. Let's black go to white moves first. White moves is simple. So let let uh, do that. First. It's below. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, you went went down. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, counting oh, white. So yeah, white. the f two pawn went to f g seven. G takes f eight bishop, returning. Why? No, first of all, I want to make it clear that this is the only scheme that you can. This is by this is the only scheme by which you can arrive at this position. You have to get that f two pawn uh, to f eight, promote it to a bishop, and then uh, return it back to f two. This is only this is only process is an uh, at least the position. But you know, uh, you showed where we saw the answer. The bishop came from h four to e f two. Yes, but uh, what I am saying is that the f two pawn must always be promoted to a bishop. I understand, pawn. but here yes. you have written. Uh, In case e three must happen after bishop f two. E three must happen after. Uh, Because if you see here, if we yes, see, uh, this is actually, yeah. So what I what I uh, mean to say here is because here we went this way. So now even if e three is there, it shouldn't matter. Correct? Yeah. But if you go if, this way, yeah. If you go bishop c five, then e three has to happen. Yeah. Uh, later. Right. Yes. So it's complicated for me. I don't understand. Bishop c five. If it comes, then e three cannot be played. But if it comes from h four, it takes the same time. So why should I? I should come from c five. These are these are two different paths. You have to count. I I said that the move was ah, okay. And the move so bishop c five comes. You can't go e three, so that one path is closed there, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if the bishop comes via c five, let's say, hmm. uh, via bishop e seven c five f two, then e three must happen later. And here we have just one system. Okay. So bishop c five, bishop comes via c five to f two, hmm. and then then automatically e three will be played and knight e two will be played. There is only one system. Hmm. There cannot be any more systems, right? Yeah. Ah, and okay. if it goes bishop g seven d four f two, in this case e three must happen. So there is also one sequence. There is also one sequence, and now the a little bit more complicated case where you have to count the third uh, case. The, yeah, where the bishop comes via h four. Yeah. In this case, e three can happen any time. It can happen before. It can happen after. So basically, you have to punch in these two sequences: f four, f five, f six, f into g seven, g into f f eight, bishop g into e seven, bishop h four, bishop f two. This is a this is one string, and the other string is e three knight e two. Ah, so these are the two. How do you call it in uh, uh, mathematical terms? Sort of the you limiting. I don't know the. These are the two factors which will limit your solution. The rest all doesn't matter. So yeah. this here, here, here. This is all normal. But once you have the bishop here, how the bishop is going to reach to f two is going to determine. So as Was mentioned. Bishop e7 has to be taken again. This so here we reach. Now one way is to come this and to f2. Then e3 knight e2 must happen after it. So that's why it's sorted. The other one is bishop e7 to um, uh, f into e7. Bishop g7. Bishop d4 to f. Oh here, take this pawn yeah. here here to d. Four, then come back e three and ninety two. Okay, got it. So here also e three and ninety two has to happen later. Okay. So and these are one plus one two sequences. Right. And the next one is uh, you get your bishop here. The g seven. Yeah. And then you get it here. And yeah. now the point is the bishop is coming to f two, but it keeps e three ninety two option open on Order. any move. Any move. Can be first move, second move, third move. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, got it. So basically, you have to punch in these two strings together. So if you go to the article, so I've written these two strings. You can highlight it so uh, our audience can see. Yeah. F4, F5, F6, F8, F7. That sequence. And then the second line. Yeah, this one, right? Yes, three second line. This is the first case that we saw. This is the yeah. second case, and now coming to the third case, uh, the F2 pawn. Returned via bishop e7 h4 f2. In this case, knight e3 can happen any time. We combine f4 f5 f6 bishop e7 bishop h4 e3 knight e2. These two are separate, separate two separate strings, and they can be combined independently. Mm. So you can put in those moves e3 knight e2 any, anywhere in between. Mm. Anywhere in between f4 f6. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, and the and the formula for this, I mean, this is a 
little bit of mathematical theory. I mean, this is uh, there is a very popular uh, you know high school high school mathematical problem. So you have a let's say you have a rack of ten books. Hmm. Let's say you have a rack of uh, here we have uh, yeah you have a rack of eight books, hmm. and you want to put in two more books into that into hmm. that rack. Hmm. And you would, uh, want to put it in such a way that those two books are not adjacent to each other. Mm. In how many ways can you do it? This problem, this non-chess problem, is same as this problem. Okay. okay. You have eight books, F4, F. You can think of it like this: F4, F5, F6, F into G7, uh, continuing up to Bishop F2 are eight books, and you are putting in two more books into it. Mm. It's year ninety. In how many ways can you do it? Okay. So the formula for that is. So what is the C is, bracket ten comma two? This uh, ten choose two, uh, the number of ways of choosing two items from ten given items. Uh, that is the number of formulas. So how do you get forty five? Uh, this is the formula of C N R. Yes, but how do you solve it? Uh, it is n factorial by r factorial into n minus r factorial. Okay, yeah, this guy, understand. this guy is a mathematician, guys. He he is also into mathematics. Otherwise, this is not possible to solve. I can't believe seventeen people solved this, Shatnik. Yeah, I I can but, understand. But this is high school I, mean, I know, I know, but this high school, I may have, I knew, I know, I learned combination, uh, permutation, combination, but I've forgotten it. I don't remember. Yeah, they actually told. Uh, for example, Doctor Manikumar said that he had to actually go back to his high school books and <laughs> yes, to yes. High school, high you school. have to learn all these things, permutation, combinations, and so. Uh, Guys, check that out. Yeah, if you if you follow Chess Base India, you can also improve your mathematics skills. Uh, forty-five plus two is forty-seven. That is that is what I was telling you before. So there are two factors. One is forty-three, and another is forty-seven. So we have got our first factor, forty-seven. Forty-seven is white. Uh, here. White right, number of number of. Because you got forty-five here, and one is the case one. The other one is case two. So total forty-seven. Correct. Yeah. Then we now, go to, now we to count the black moves. Okay. Now uh, black we, starts with knight c6. In this case, first two moves should be knight c6, knight b4. c6, queen b6 can follow later. But again, queen b6, queen b3 can only happen after knight b3 uh, takes. A knight knight comes to e2 via b3. It uh -huh. should be d2. There is a typo actually. Knight b3 into d2. Ah, knight b3 into d2. Yeah. So in between knight c6, knight b4, and queen b3 have six moves, and the two strings knight a2, c1, b3, d2, c6, queen b6 combine in fifteen ways. Wow. Okay, got it. Uh, I mean now I understand this much better. Uh, although the mathematical of how this thing works, I don't know. But uh, case two, black starts with knight a6. In this case, strings are knight a6, knight b4, knight a2, knight c1, knight b3, and c6. Okay. Again, they are independent and can be combined by the same formula. So you have to find the number of moves. Okay, got it. Twenty-eight ways. Hence, the net moves run out to be fifty. So here, in in this case, where we are looking at black's way of moving, uh, then it. Becomes clear that the knight and the queen are the two things which are, yeah. Because here you got the knight, and if you start with knight c six, if you start with knight c six, then knight c six knight b four has to happen automatically. Yes, and only then c six and queen b six can come. Yes, so but if you go with knight a six, then, yeah, then c six and queen b six can happen on any move. So that is why I have made two cases. Correct, but here c6 queen b6 cannot happen before because then the knight c6 square is taken up. Okay, got it. So knight yeah, c6. Yeah. So uh, the case where black plays starts with one c6 is covered in the uh, in the case where I have counted the number of moves where knight starts with eight. Eight. Okay. So if black plays c6, then automatically knight the knight has to go to a6. So mm. this comes under the second case. So basically, those two cases exhaust all possibilities. I would say this is more math. Uh, this is also has chess elements, but very like I would say fifty-fifty maths and chess. Yeah, it, 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 I think it's exactly fifty-fifty because uh, there are many problems where math the math gets very complicated, and the case becomes very trivial. I think uh, in this one uh, we have the chess element is also good because 
you see this all this maneuver with the pawn the yes. pawn goes to f8 and then comes back to f2 first you have to answer. understand that it's not your actual c1 bishop which yeah, went yeah. to f2 it, it, it is the good. other one beautiful it, these are typical uh, proof game motifs uh, uh, can you tell us a bit about andrew buchanan andrew buchanan he's a very good friend of mine i have been you know speaking to him about retrograde analysis since uh, like last like two or what three does years. he do like is he just yeah. a sol uh, into chess or is he a mathematician He's an. I think he has. He has a degree in mathematics from Oxford University. So he's okay. a very good, very good uh, at mathematics. And I think he also cracked uh, international maths Olympiad. I think. I don't. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. Uh, but he is very good. And okay. and uh, uh, right now he is an uh, IT call IT consultant. He moves around the world and uh, itinerant itinerant IT consultant. Wow. And he is only into into this retrograde analysis and chess math problems things like. That. So, so look at this, Shatnik. The thing is, you got forty-three sequences as black, forty-seven yeah. as white, and when you multiply them, uh, yeah. it comes to two thousand twenty-one, and that is the new year that we are celebrating yeah. uh, when you are solving this. And uh, what is written here is a perfect problem and a perfect way to wish a happy new year. Since forty-three and forty-seven are two delightfully manageable prime factors, a few of our solver solvers eschewed the use of combinatorial. Torics and adopted a somewhat brute for ah okay someone would have actually sat down and said one way is this then yeah, second yeah. way is this and counted, they did forty they counted forty three and forty seven <laughs> separately and then multiplied <laughs> smart and yeah. here is someone who is twelve year old who is this twelve year old who solved it yeah I don't know I don't remember his name but uh, yeah he solved it he said that I don't know much high school mathematics uh, so I I have solved it this uh, he's not reached uh, then, high school yet he's just twelve yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow beautiful so uh, these are the winners guys 17 people neelash saha sayan roy uh, one of them will come uh, on the quiz uh, day i think mostly aditya will come who is a very strong player okay. adil tanvir alekhya mukhopadhyay rohit shelke saurabh biswas soham bhattacharya anirudh daga वेल मुरुगन नल्लू स्वामी उदित कामदार उमंग कामदार अमंग दोस्त टू ओनली वन विल कम बिकॉज दे दे आल्सो वर्क टुगेदर सो वन ऑफ देम विल कम सो वे वी हैव 16 पीपल विल जॉइन सेतु माधव उपाध्याय युला परमार तिहार भाई रमेश डॉक्टर एस मनी कुमार आई थिंक डॉक्टर एस मनी कुमार इज अ वेरी वेल नोन सॉल्वर यस या ही इज अ कंपोजर आल्सो ही इज अ वेरी वेल नोन कंपोजर आल्सो वेल मुरुगन इज अ इज एन इंडियन कंपोजर I mean, well, Mur. Oh, nice. Yes, composition uh, problem. Jochen Weg. He is from which country? He is from Frankfurt, Germany. Wow. And Piyush Narsikar. Piyush Narsikar was so excited. He was commenting everywhere. When are the actually yeah, Piyush Narsikar's uh, solutions were also very, uh, you know, impeccable. They were perfect. And I always had his name in mind. So <laughs> when I wrote this article, I forgot to uh, mention his name. His name was so. I mean, uh, you know, it was so uh, present in my mind that I forgot to write it. Okay. Okay. Got it. So these are the sixteen people. So seventeen yeah. names, but out of uh, those two, Udit and Umang, one of them will come. So sixteen people will battle it out on seventeenth of January at four p.m., where they will have uh, three positions to solve. Or how is it, Shatnik? You are thinking about it. Yeah. How to? No. No. I. I will. I will. Uh, you know. Let, let, let know of the format. The format will be decided on that day, and the top three guys will be chosen. the main aim is to not just find the winner but also acquaint all of you with this beautiful world of composing i hope that all of you enjoyed this i think close to an hour just flew by shatnik while yeah. i was discussing this with you and for me uh, the richness of chess increased today when i discussed this with you for me chess was all about normal you know what we play Ah, yeah, but yeah. now i see a completely different world where there are help help mates self mates mathematics involved in it there is you you do the sort of the detective approach go to the yeah. final position come back i i loved it thank you so much for your time and for showing this and also for for bringing up such an entertaining uh, contest it was tremendous thank you thank you sir thank, thank you uh, really and it's good to have to have been uh, present here Yes, we will meet again on seventeenth. On seventeenth, yes. and uh, till until then, see you. Bye bye. Bye.